Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Going to be working on the 68 Chevy truck today. And my project today is to change the rear end gears. This truck has a Detroit locker gear set in the rear end, which basically makes it a positive traction. The problem with that is when you turn the wheels, it's both tires in the back wanting to grab. It makes it a little harder to turn. And if you're out in grass, it'll chew grass up and pick up gravel. and Just not, to, not what we wanted on this truck. So I'm going to take out the Detroit locker gears and put in a new just conventional gear set. We'll see how that goes. Here's a gear set that we're going to be putting back in the truck once we take out the, the old ones. Uh, pretty straightforward. You got new spider gears, a new shaft to hold them. Uh, there's a bolt for the shaft. There's a bolt in there for the shaft, and then there's some spacers that go in. Looks pretty simple, so get the truck up on the lift, drain the old fluid out, try to change these gears. Okay, got the truck up on the lift, getting ready to drain out the oil out of the rear end. And we actually changed this not long ago, so I'm going to try to save what we put in there. It hasn't been in that long, so it'll be fine. And the way you drain this, you just have to loosen the cover, and it'll come dripping out then. I know you're probably wondering why I don't wear gloves. I have work gloves, but when I'm taking bolts out or doing kind of fine work, I can't get a hold of anything with gloves on. So I just work with my bare hands when I'm doing certain jobs. But sometimes I do use them. I'm just loosening this. The top bolts and the side bolts, hopefully enough to where I can take the bottom ones out and just open the bottom of this up and let it drain out slowly. All right, I have the side bolts and the top bolts loose enough to where I think I can prise out on the pan here and get it to start draining. I don't have the lift all the way up kind of kind of kind of watch and not bump my head but it's easier to get to if I don't lift it all the way up I can reach those top bolts a whole lot easier I'm gonna, we're saving it here in a good container we'll reuse that won't be quite as messy this way maybe and get most of it out and then I'll take the rest of the cover off. This is actually a transmission jack. But I built this wooden cradle to set on top. So it works pretty good as an oil catcher too. It's slowing down so that's pretty much getting it. I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of these bolts out now. This truck, the old engine, We've changed the engine since then, but the old engine used oil. And we cleaned all of this off. Last time we worked on this rear end, and it's still, it's got a film of oil on it again from where that old engine is using oil. So we'll clean this off again. We'll put it back, put a little fresh paint on it. Got a couple in the very top that's hard to get to. We got a sway bar that runs right across the top of the cover, so that makes it kind of hard to get to a couple of bolts there behind that sway bar. All right. There's a 
here's the setup we have now. I'm going to scrape this old gasket off and hopefully some more of this oil will run out and get out of the way. Had the old gasket material scraped off and here's what that center chunk looks like in that. That's what we're going to be taking out. We'll put this cover back on. A lot of different opinions on what you should do, but uh, we tried the gasket and it still leaked at the bottom. So this time we're just going to go with the RTV, seal it with that, and, and just try that. Good, good thick layer of it and see if it works any better. We got to take this bolt out. That will allow the center pin to slide through where we can get those gears out. Thirty minutes later, still dripping oil. I think this would drip for a month if you let the cover off. But okay, I got the bolt out that holds the shaft that holds the gears. So okay, came right out. Now what do we do? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to get my glasses on and take a good look at this to figure out how we can get this out of here. Uh, not sure you can see in there or not, but these axles have a clip. So you push the axle in, get the clip off, then pull the axle out, and that should let the gear come out. Well, I got the clips off, ends of the axles, and I found... The easiest way, after fishing the left side, the driver's side out from the inside, if you turn this down, there's a slot, a wide slot. And of course you gotta get the clip in the right direction where it can fall out, but if you prize out on that, that clip will fall right out of that slot. Anyway, got them out, got the axles loose. So now we can pull the axles out and get those gears out and put the others back in. After a lot of prying and turning and moving, finally got it out. The problem with this, to get, getting it out, was these. this is spring-loaded here. And these two halves like go together like that. And it puts so much pressure on the outsides that it's hard to get it out of there. But that's the old one. Here's two of the gears I have just sitting in there. And all I should have to do now is put the spider gears in and put the pin back in up here, put the bolt in, and that'll take care of it. The larger gears, as well as these two smaller spider gears, have new spacers. So we'll put them in behind the gear. Slide that pin in, put the bolt in to hold it. We should have the gear part finished. Use the old clips that I took out, so they'll go back in to hold the axles in. All right, got the stock gears back in. Had the pin back in, the center. Had the bolt back in. Just need to tighten it up. And then we'll be ready for the cover. Quite a job. Once I got into this, this passenger side axle would not scoot in far enough for the clip to really fall off. Uh, had to hammer on it a lot. And then when I put the new one back in, it would not come in to the center enough to get the clip just to push it on. So I had to kind of force the clip on. But once it got on there, then it, it loosened up. This is, was all the way in but it wasn't quite enough to free it up like it should, so. I had to, I even took the tire and wheel off, as you can see, and I hammered on the center of this to drive it in some more, but it just, it liked about an eighth of an inch really going in enough, but we made it work. So I'm going, I'm going to tighten that bolt up and that pin, 
and we'll put this cover back on. We, we wiped this off with lacquer thinner. Might need to take a putty knife and just scrape it again up there at the top. There's a, the cover. Needs a little scraping down on it, so. Because we're not using a gasket, I've got the RTV already on here. We'll let it get just a little hard and tacky. And then hopefully we won't have any leaks. Bead around the cover too. Maybe it won't leak. Hope not. The brake line there. All right. We're reading the directions on this RTV. It says to put a bead on, put your cover on, and just tighten it somewhat, not a whole lot, and then wait another Go eat a hour. sandwich. Huh? Go eat a sandwich. Yeah, go eat a sandwich. Just past lunchtime. But you're supposed to just kind of snug them up, wait an hour, and then come back and tighten them then. Guess it lets it get spongy, kind of makes a gasket out of it. So. So we're gonna try that. Well, we got the cover on, just kind of, kind of hand tightened those. Didn't tighten them real good, so like I said, we're gonna wait an hour and come back. Clean the cover off too. It's got a lot of undercoating and paint and dirt. They painted the undercoating and the paint over the top of dirt. It looks like so. We'll clean that later. Job's completed. We retightened all the bolts, so hopefully we'll have no leaks and everything will be good. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.